So what I'm going to be doing in this sketchbook session is basically talking about the basic forms. And the basic forms are the more abstract, geometric ideas that we begin with whenever we're building a drawing or a painting. And I think what happens a lot is that um, people kind of go for the more difficult things or the more complex forms before they have a solid understanding of the basics. And with anything, with any language, uh, the basics become really important because you can't, if you think about uh, written language, uh, you can't construct a um, book or a magazine article or a blog post or um, sales copy without understanding the basic structure of the language that you're writing in. And so for English, you would need to know verbs and nouns and adverbs and adjectives and pronouns and things like that, and how sentences are constructed. And no matter what you're doing, you're going to be using those basic ideas, those basic principles to compose uh, your whatever it is you're writing. The same thing is true with the visual language. Remember that drawing is visual. It is communication. So the idea is that you are drawing in order to communicate what something looks like at the very basic level. So here I have an oval form which I am attempting at this point to just very quickly show as a three-dimensional um, kind of spherical idea. And I'm going to put that on a surface. And I'm going to indicate the surface by using a cast shadow. And this is just very foundational. So there is the concept of form hierarchy. So form hierarchy is simply the idea that you start large and simple and then work your way down to the details. If you start with the details, you're going to lose your way uh, for the most part. Uh, you have to have a lot of experience working with the large and simple first and approaching it this way before you're going to successfully be able to draw just starting with details where you're uh, focusing on edges and contours. And uh, you need to know where you're going if you're going to start here. You need to be able to imagine in your mind's eye and translate to paper if uh, you start with the details. But you can't do that um, successfully. You can't do that comfortably or uh, kind of as a matter of course unless you have an understanding of the larger forms and you keep those in mind as you draw. So we want to look at uh, the very basics of form and also have an understanding of what form is. You know, what is form? So I teach in my design classes and in my uh, basic drawing classes that form is the visual appearance of something. It's some, how something looks. Form is made of shapes. So shapes are flat, two-dimensional. Forms in reality are volume, they have height, width, and depth, therefore they're three-dimensional. When we draw, 
we are in the two-dimensional realm because we're using a flat surface that has height and width, but we don't have depth. We can't go into the paper. Uh, we, we have to create the illusion of volume. So when we're drawing two-dimensionally, we are creating the illusion of volume. Now this pertains not just to drawing and painting, this pertains to gaming, uh, this pertains to film and animation, uh, this pertains to uh, f photography. We capture images and then manipulate them to uh, uh, create a uh, sense of uh, flattened space or deep volume. But every time we're working two-dimensionally, whether it's in a drawing or it's in film or it's in gaming or an app even, uh, we're dealing with volumetric illusion. In other words, the appearance of volume but not the actuality of it. So to draw well, to communicate visually what it is we're seeing, we have to have an understanding of how to get here. And so we use the primary forms, or the basic forms, to start fleshing out a sense of volume, the appearance or illusion of that idea. Now volume has height, width, and depth. I'll just show you my paintbrush. This is a form. It has length or height. It has width, and it's narrow here, but it also has depth. It has a what we call a transverse plane. So we have uh, a two-dimensional idea. On the other side, another two-dimensional idea, but in between, we have the transverse plane that goes in the uh, opposite direction. It's perpendicular to this and this, and that gives us the idea of volume. So when I draw, I need to be able to communicate that this is a three-dimensional form, even though I'm only using two dimensions to draw it. So as I said, all drawing is communication, and if you're trying to communicate, you need to understand the principles and the systems of the visual language. So the basics of form, form hierarchy, We need to understand the basic forms. So, the basic forms two-dimensionally in terms of they have height and width, or they have a vertical and a horizontal idea, are the circle, the square, and the triangle. These are flat, two-dimensional shapes. Three-dimensionally, we have height, width, and depth, or the vertical, the horizontal, and the transverse plane. So, the three-dimensional expression of a circle is a sphere. The three-dimensional expression of a square is a cube. The three-dimensional expression of a triangle is a pyramid. One thing to understand about these forms and these shapes is that they relate to geometry. If you took geometry in high school, 
you would have dealt with triangles and angles and spheres and cubes and basically what we would call plane geometry, which is the idea of expressing mathematical relationships in a planar idea. So if something is flat, it's planar. If something is has three dimensions, it's not flat, but it's volumetric. So we deal with volume and plane as different understandings. In the planar realm, in the planar idea with a drawing or a painting, something you see on screen, uh, you're dealing with volume as an illusion, as I've already said. So it's important that this communicates the actuality. So, starting again with the circle, the uh, square, and the triangle, any three-dimensional form can be abstracted or simplified into one or another of these, or a combination of these. Uh, emojis, which have become so popular, are basically a circle. And then we give them eyes and a mouth. And so we have a geometric form, and we use that as the basis for representing the human head, and we can also use that as the basis for representing a dog in which we have triangles, another triangle, circles, a larger circle sitting on an even larger circle, put in a few squares, put in another circle, and you have the basis of a dog. So everything can be broken down into these basic forms. You know, these we call primary forms because they're the first things. Everything can be built off of them. So basic forms, primary forms, they're kind of the same thing. So in understanding how to start drawing something, we want to start with the basic form. We want to start big. That's the hierarchy. The, the primary thing or the first thing we do is lay out the overall idea of something before we get bogged down into detail. If I'm going to draw something as mundane as this paintbrush, I'll look at it and I will notice the width relationship to this width relationship, this length to this length, and this length to this length. There is a circle here, which is for practical use to hang this thing up on the wall. This is the ferrule, and it holds the bristles on. The bristles fan out. This has been used, so the bristles have fanned out on the ends, but they're very dense where the ferrule is holding them to the handle. There is a curve and then a corresponding curve here. It's about as narrow here as it is here. Noticing from the side, it's thicker and gets a little thinner and then thickens out again. And that's all the functionality so that we can actually hold this the way it needs to be held for various painting applications. So this being a three-dimensional form, I'm going to be looking at this if I want to draw this from life, but overall I'm going to be seeing it's basically oblong. So the first thing I'm going to do is kind of lay in
I don't know, you may not find paintbrushes interesting to draw, uh, but you know, it's kind of an interesting form, I think. It's got some different texture to it, um, and it's this is a good thing for just understanding uh, what I'm talking about, so that's why I'm drawing a paintbrush. Also, it was right here on my uh, drafting table. So the first thing I'm gonna do I want to draw this with an idea of perspective is lay in the larger geometric form. Now I'm doing this in perspective. I'm not doing a flat idea, but I could do I could do a flat idea. There's a center axis. There's an oval. that to that, the feral sort of square. So that's what we would call the plane or the planner, plane view, the plan view, looking at it basically having only height and width. And then, but you see that it's fairly simple. There's no detail here. It's just overall shape. It's the larger shapes. There's a square. There's a a truncated triangle here because these sides are not parallel, so that makes it triangular. They, the sides converge toward each other and it, they can meet basically here in the middle. So here's the triangle. Here's a rectangle and then there's a smaller square inside that there's an oval, which is a compressed circle. So it's fairly simple. That is the basic idea. That is the primary idea of what this is. And I didn't get bogged down into the details. Now I'm going to get more detailed because I'm drawing this in perspective from the angle at which I'm viewing it. And of course I'm holding it down here, but I'll just lay it down flat. And so I am going to be putting a grid basically in my mind's eye. So basically, hopefully you can see this. This is a piece of acetate that's uh, attached by tape very loosely uh, to a uh, chipboard frame. And I've ruled off one inch horizontal and vertical grid lines. So this piece of acetate is divided into 80 squares. And so if I'm looking at this from my point of view, which is seeing that paintbrush at an angle, I'm going to be seeing and judging or estimating the angle of what I see based off the horizontal or the vertical. So if you look at it from the camera angle, which is pretty flat, you've got horizontal, you've got vertical. So if we've got horizontal, let's draw this out real quick here, and you've got this angle, what is that angle? And then you'll be looking at this angle, probably off the vertical. So you want to estimate or eyeball what is this angle based on a vertical or a horizontal understanding. So this viewing frame has been around, well not this particular one, but this idea has been around since uh, I think right before the Renaissance. And it was a way of, uh, it, it's a drawing aid. In my beginning drawing classes, I have my students make these and they basically sight through them as they're looking at things. And they are able to get used to judging the uh, angles off the horizontal vertical. So this is not a measuring device. This is a, a uh, it's more for estimating angles. So as you're starting to draw, this kind of tool can be really helpful to you. 
but then at some point you will want to stop using it because you will be able to look at what you're seeing and in your mind's eye overlay that grid. And so you're always estimating the angles. So from my point of view, getting back to the drawing here, much more like this, and then So I'm starting to deal with the transverse plane right here. And I am adjusting as I go. But because I've laid in the larger idea already, it becomes easier to lay in, start laying in the details. Give it a center axis. It's always a good idea to look for a center axis. And just lay in that oval. And I will always come back and adjust later on. But you see how I lay in that oval, then I connect. I look for those transition areas. So I've got this moving this way. This is a uh, curve going one direction at a particular pace. This is a curve that's going opposite. So we actually end up with kind of an overall S curve coming around. So I always want to keep in mind when I'm drawing volume this transverse plane because it's even here. I'm seeing the side of the brush. So the brush itself is creating, it's got a, a kind of overall shape to it. It has uh, width and it has length. And so that's what I'm looking at here. So there is a uh, the idea of this being flat and then it changes direction. So this becomes an edge even though it's a really soft edge. This is a much harder edge and this is somewhat of a softer edge. This doesn't really have an edge because uh, the edge has been sanded down to the point where uh, there's no sharp transition between one plane and another as they intersect. These need to be shortened a bit, and I'm judging proportion here. And I'm still kind of setting things up. I'm not really even getting into the details. I'm just, uh, but I've started large and I'm going small. I'm starting with the primary forms, the basic forms, and then starting to flesh out details. And I'm not worrying about erasing anything. I don't usually draw with an eraser. I just let things hang the way I've drawn them. And if the search lines show, it just shows the journey I've been on in the drawing. So now I'm at the point where I might come down and start noodling into the details. 
again, helping to make sure I'm getting that form turned properly. The idea that this is kind of a cladded or an overlay that's wrapping, it's a, a belly band, if you will, that's wrapping around the brush. So I want to make sure that that's understood visually. So that's part of the detail. Any object is the result of how it was created, how it was built or formed. And so if you start understanding and looking at forms as something that actually has been made, and you can see what, first of all, what it's made of. And so here we have natural bristles, we have metal, and we have wood. And we understand that um, there's a, uh, a sanding process going on with this that has taken this from uh, a flat piece of wood, probably a, uh, what, a one by two or one half by two, something like that. And then it was uh, routed or cut down maybe with a jig and uh, then the handle rounded, but it's not as round here or here. And then uh, the bristles were gathered and bunched together and then probably glued into or glued against the wood here. And then it's wrapped with this belly band or collar, if you will, that holds everything together. So there is a formation process, a construction process that results in what this thing does and what it looks like. And so as you're drawing, study how something is formed and how things are come together. Uh, we've got these little brads, these little tiny little nails that are holding the collar on. And so we have some gaps and we have the idea of this being rounded. It is uh, uh, pressed here to help hold the bristles in. This, this detail is the last thing you deal with because it's not important to express the overall form. I've got a paintbrush here. It looks like a paintbrush. It doesn't have any of the uh, minor details in here. So, but it still communicates paintbrush. So these are the last things you want to deal with as you draw. The individual bristles, um, I'm not even going to deal with here because I'm not going to get that far with this. Uh, but the individual bristles add texture, but the overall form is that kind of triangular idea that I was showing you here. So go from large, whoops, spell that properly, and simple. Two, small, and detailed. Do not begin with the details first. Look at the overall shape. This is your initial understanding. This is the initial thing that your brain is actually going to understand are the larger simple shapes. So if you want to fill out your sketchbook with some form hierarchy, uh, some basic form sketching, uh, I have a list of 15 things that you can start with. So to get that assignment sheet for your sketchbook, there's a link in the description. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. Just leave them in the comments. And please don't forget to subscribe. And also, if you want to be notified of new videos, Click on the bell.